I know Raw was apparently horrendous this week, like just absolutely horrendous, and it seemed like everybody that was tweeting about it was saying the same damn things. And that's not generally a good vibe to have, as you're less than two weeks away from WrestleMania. And I've personally noticed how SmackDown has kind of started to tail off a little bit in the past few weeks. And I don't know why too well. Of course I know why. We will talk about that in a moment. But if you haven't done so already, you should smash that subscribe button and follow the show on Twitter because tomorrow night I'll have a Q&A video up. So if you want to be able to participate, have your questions answered in future Q&As, that's the way you do so. Follow me on Twitter and ask the questions. But let's go ahead and talk about this show. It started off well enough. Um, Edge's opening promo I thought was really, really damn good. You know, after the video package that starts the show that is supposed to be a teaser to let people know why they should watch and not be some glory shot for Daniel Bryan helping to drive fans away. It's like Daniel Bryan starts to edge him towards the door and then Seth Rollins about half hour in, the rating slayer, will fucking finish the job. But Edge is great here. You know, he was talking about how Daniel Bryan weaseled himself in. Like, you could just feel the star power. You could feel the presence. You could feel like it's a bit of a masterclass for promos in today's wrestling that far more talents need to be watching and paying attention to, not working on their stupid ass fucking move sets. You know, and I resent this whole notion of people talking about, well, Edge is a heel. How the fuck is he the heel in this case? That makes no sense. There is one and only one heel in this sense, and it's not Edge, and it sure as fuck is not our tribal chief, the head of the table, Roman Reigns. It's that little weaselly ass whiny cry bitchy baby, Mr. Entitled himself, Daniel Bryan. Edge has every right to be pissed. He should be pissed. He earned his shot. He won the Rumble. Daniel Bryan didn't earn shit and somehow got, got an entitled ass spot in the triple threat at Mania doing some breakfast club business. It's like, if you can't understand the differences, then I don't know what the hell to tell you. But the promo with Edge was really, really, really damn good. So, of course, they're going to immediately follow it up with <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. And what is stunning to me, you have this eight-man tag match because you're building up towards next week's SmackDown, which is going to have a four-way tag team title match, to which I say, you have two nights of WrestleMania now, and you're doing such a poor job of managing your time that you have to still give away these matches on SmackDown before the two nights of WrestleMania? Who the fuck does this? Anyways, nonetheless, like once Dolph Ziggler came out, within a minute or two, no lie, it was legitimately sleepy bye-bye time and I didn't wake up until 9 o'clock Eastern. Like no bullshit. So I had to go back and watch what had actually happened. Like that's how bad it is with a Dolph Ziggler. That's how bad he is in the boredom department. Like, even the people that used to rage for him over the years have now come to realize, like, why would I give a fuck about a guy that clearly doesn't give a fuck about himself? That's a valid question. Why the hell would you waste any time investing in an ass hat like that? Why would you? Um, then, of course, you had Seth Rollins coming out looking like a dumbass. I don't know whose jacket looked worse, Seth Rollins or Corey Graves. Probably a push there. Um... But yeah, is Cesaro actually going to go over at WrestleMania? And if not, what's the whole point of this? Like, they just build up Cesaro for a few weeks so that way they could give somebody to Seth to have him job them out at Mania? Like, I don't know. Like, I, I maybe I should care more about it than I actually do, but the reality is, when's the last time I really thought anything Seth Rollins did was particularly interesting. It's been a few years, and I know I'm not alone in that sentiment. Like, I, people used to complain about somebody like a Roman being forced. You know, last time I checked, it wasn't Roman that was beating Brock Lesnar clean multiple times. It was fucking Seth Rollins. It wasn't Roman that was associated with God. It was Seth Rollins. 
It wasn't Roman that was sitting there being aligned on camera with his girlfriend, Becky Lynch. That was Seth fucking Rollins. There's a reason I call him the rating slayer. Because he's earned that moniker. And please help me understand why Shayna Baszler is jobbing out to Natalia in a minute. Like, it feels like I fell asleep. Like, my body was telling me. It was like a Dolph Ziggler defense mechanism. It said, nope, go sleep. Wait until match over. Wait until Seth Rollins shit over. Wait until Natalia's off camera. Like, I gotta figure out if the WWE is gonna continue to do this and present their shows this way in weeks to come. Like, my body's gonna have to adjust to this and I might welcome the Friday night nap. Hey, fuck you. I'm 40 now. Like... Any decent amount of sleep I could get is certainly welcome, that's for damn sure. I did, however, pick back up right at 9 o'clock when you had the big red carpet premiere for Sami Zayn's uh, documentary trailer about his conspiracies, and he had YouTuber Logan Paul there. And I was thought they were going to maybe let Logan Paul talk a little bit more, but the reality is this is a big gift for WWE. I think the Pauls are D-bags. I think they're stupid, but at the end of the day... You got somebody with 20 plus million YouTube subscribers. Like, I don't have to like everything in terms of who you associate with or who you bring in to understand the appeal, to understand what you're trying to drive at. If you wouldn't bring in a Logan Paul, if you were in charge of WWE, then you're a fucking moron. And frankly, it should be building towards bringing him in at WrestleMania too at this point. I love the work that Sami Zayn has done over the past several months. I even like the spot that he's in now. I like the fact that he's being rewarded with the great work that he's done when he got away from just being a dude and becoming a character. It has been night and day in terms of that difference. But I just hate the fact that this always seems to have to come back to Kevin fucking Owens. We're not building towards Final Battle 2010 any damn more. Can we get past the Kevin Steen El Generico days? Now, for some of you, you might have this sick, morbid fascination with these two getting a one-on-one -on -one match at WrestleMania. I do not. I do not want to see that. I'll deal with it and hope to God they have a Sami Zayn win, although I have a feeling I know where this is fucking going. But at this point, shit, I'd like to have Logan Paul involved at WrestleMania because why the hell not? I mean, why not? Why not? Uh, Bianca Belair and Carmella happened in the second hour and weird how Carmella went from being a thing to not really being a thing in, in a pretty quick fashion, mind you. Um, you know, you have all this shit with Reginald and then nothing really manifested about it. Like I said, again, it's like WWE couldn't help themselves and they really distracted away from the whole build with Bianca and Sasha. And maybe that's in part because they know that Sasha, while a lot of fans might resonate towards her, like, she's not that great. And you certainly don't want to give her a ton of mic time. And she comes across as kind of fake and phony. And, and then that's a reality that she does. Um, you know, and as far as Sasha Banks trying to attack her from behind and the whole, we'll wait till WrestleMania, it's like, you know what? You ladies are going to be the night one main event. I pray to, I pray to, pray to, pray to God that that match isn't clunky and botchy. Because I hope it doesn't become one of those matches we say, oh, it was supposed to be black girl magic and no magic was to be found. Ugh. Ugh. And, and this whole thing about Apollo Crews. Oh. What the fuck is a Nigerian drum match? Punjabi prison match. Nigerian drum match. Why can't we have an Arkansas-style inbred fucking cousin fucker match? <laughs> A Nigerian drum match? What the hell is that even supposed to be? Can it just be a goddamn street fight and just keep it moving? Speaking of street fights, this whole night was building towards the main event, which is going to be a street fight with Jey Uso and Daniel Bryan. And this, of course, was the worst thing of the entire night. So help me understand this. You've got Edge out there on commentary. You've got Roman and Paul Heyman sitting at top of the ramp. It's a street fight, which means there's no rules. 
Roman and Edge are supposed to be so both pissed off because this little pipsqueak whined and pissed and moaned and bitched his white and entitled ass into a main event spot that he didn't merit, he didn't earn, he didn't deserve at WrestleMania, that they're just going to let him go through the entire match with Jey Uso entirely unscathed? I'm sorry, but if you're thinking about this from a storytelling standpoint, if you're thinking about this from a pure logic standpoint, why in the bluest of blue fucks wouldn't Roman and Edge go down there, help Jay kick the ever-loving shit out of Daniel Bryan to the point where he can't compete at WrestleMania? Now maybe you say that's not unrealistic, or that's too unrealistic because they've already booked themselves in this fucking corner, so why the hell would they do that? But this is to me where I think Sometimes logic needs to be brought back in professional wrestling. Why the hell would these two dudes sit there and watch a street fight where the whole purpose of a street fight is there are no fucking rules so they could come in and help Jay win. They could come in and just beat the brakes off of Daniel Bryan and never even have a fucking match. And they don't do that. So of course, eventually Daniel Bryan's gonna get the job done because Jay, once again, back to his effing it up ways, can't even get the main event worst code right. But the worst, most egregious thing of all is not only did they have to squeeze Daniel Bryan in here, not only is he the heel in this whole storyline and dynamic, now you gotta sit there and you have him laying out both Edge and fucking Roman Reigns? Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? It doesn't help Edge. It doesn't help Roman. And oh, by the way, it doesn't help Daniel Bryan either. It's fucking stupid. Why do we have to have these random moments where all of a sudden he goes into breakfast club killer mode? It's a fucking abomination. You should not be building up as Daniel Bryan as a legitimate viable threat to both of these guys. You've already went down the heel path, and let's be clear, you absolutely went down the heel path with him, with the way that he got into this Mania match. As a result, it should be about art smarting, it should be about running away and sticking, jab and move, jab and move type of shit. Not the, I'm Daniel Bryan, I'm the best mother of the world, and I'm Scott Lee, including logic and common sense. So I'm going to lay out both of the actual stars here, both of the actual real deal main eventers, and ruin it once a fucking again. This is 50-50 dumbass shit. And then what are you going to do now, next week? You're going to have Roman look great and have him stand tall? Oh, my fucking God. And at this point in time, for the people that are sitting there and saying, well, yeah, Daniel Bryan was put in there to eat the pinfall. Yeah, but that also probably means he was put in there to eat the pinfall for Edge. Like, why would you put him in there? So Roman doesn't beat Edge? Like you would want Roman to beat Edge. And because of it, you could sit there and do more. If you're saying, well, we want to have Daniel Bryan in there to help the match along, then Edge shouldn't have won the fucking Rumble. If that was the concern. It's just so dumb and it's so stupid. And then to see what the hell they trotted out there as an abortion of a close to this week's show? Fuck SmackDown. The only real crime about it is that I only fell asleep for 40 minutes of the show. I wish after the opening segment I would have stayed asleep and missed the rest of this crap, because it sucked.